Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is the Salmon Burger. Well, the warmer weather is upon us and that always makes me want to grill more seafood. So today what we're going to do is we're going to take a whole side of salmon. It's wild caught sockeye, really pretty stuff. We're going to break that down into a patty and then build a burger around it. Now there's two main parts to our recipe today. We're going to have that salmon patty and then we're going to make a mustard aioli from scratch. And then after that, it's just bringing all the toppings together on the bun. So I'm going to jump right into that salmon patty and fire up the 640S. So this is our sockeye right here. And uh, it's a nice big filet, but I want to break it down so it's a little bit easier to get the skin off of here. And we're also going to take these pin bones out. So you're just going to need a pair of needle nose pliers. I like to have one around that I dedicate just to food stuff, never use it for any other sort of work. That way it stays nice and clean. And then you're just going to find the ends of these little pin bones and pull those right out. Now this salmon's really cold right now. In fact, I got it about halfway frozen because it makes it a little bit easier to work with. And for what we're doing today, it's really not going to damage the structure too much because we're already going to be breaking this way down to turn it into a burger patty. All right, again, we're just trying to break this down. We don't have to keep it too pretty. So one of the things that we can do to make this a little bit easier is just go ahead and split it in half lengthwise before we try and take that skin off because we're actually going to cut this up into like one inch cubes anyway. So I'm just going to get my knife nice and flat, get a nice sharp knife right above the skin. And just hold that down and work our way down the fillet. Boom. Hardly any loss there. Perfect. Pin that skin down. Keep your blade flat against the table and work your way to the end. We got the skin off the whole fillet. Now we're going to take this down into cubes here. Just about an inch in either direction. We throw these into a bowl. Also, if you see any scales that are stuck behind, go ahead and rinse those off before you get to this stage. Now, the salmon's warmed up a little bit. It's pretty warm outside right now. I just want to cool it down a little bit before we process it and break it down so that we're doing more chopping and cutting rather than mashing. So I let our cubed salmon chill out in the freezer for about 15 minutes just to get a nice bit of chill on the outside of it. Now we're going to combine the rest of the ingredients for the patty in the bowl and then transfer it to the food processor. I'm going to take the zest off of one small lemon and throw that in there. So this will give us a little bit of brightness, a little bit of citrus, and we'll just knock that right in there with the salmon. Then just set this aside because we're going to use the juice and the aioli. Next you're going to grab one egg and we're going to use the yolk of that egg in the patty. So we'll separate these here, get rid of the white. And what we're going to do here is this, this yolk is going to add some nice richness and a little bit of moisture without too much water content to the patty itself. And then next is just the seasoning. So we're using Plowboy's Fin and Feather. We want about a teaspoon of this. And we're using it for its bright lemon flavor as well as that bit of color, the redness there. A little garlic and onion and salt. I'm going to punch up the salt and smokiness just a little bit more though with just about a half teaspoon of pecan smoked salt. All right, so we'll just toss this stuff around to kind of coat all of the salmon. And then transfer it over to the food processor. Distribute this around the food processor. Food processor is loaded up. All right, and then we're just going to get in here with the pulse button. Kind of redistribute this so it breaks down a little bit more evenly because obviously we've got some big chunks left. And then we've got some small chunks, which are a little closer to the consistency we're going for. All right, so check out that consistency right there. That looks really good. It still has some texture. It's not just mush, right? But it's small enough to form into a patty. All right, I'm going to transfer this mixture back to the bowl now just to see exactly how much we end up with. We started out with almost a pound and a half. We 
before we took the skin off. So we're at one pound, five ounces. So one pound, four to five ounces in that range. That means I'm gonna pull off this four to five ounces from the top. We'll set that aside, that'll be our slider, right? And then we're gonna take the remaining pound that's still in there, divide it in half. And we're gonna create some half pound patties. Nice big chunk of salmon. Baby brother over there. Now the way we're gonna define just how big of a patty we create as far as the spread goes is we're going to look at the bun. We want something that's equally as big as the bun so that the bun doesn't overwhelm the meat. Uh, so we'll just take our onion bun here that we're using today. You could use whatever you like, a brioche, a potato bun, whatever it is. We'll set that right next to it here. And we're pretty close on size, right? So we'll press that out maybe just a little bit more so it's a little bit wider than that bun. And we'll go ahead and form that into the patty shape. Same thing here, I'm gonna look just slightly larger than our bun, perfect. Clean up the sides. Now there's no filler in these burger patties, right? I mean, there's a little bit of seasoning, there's a little bit of yolk, which adds a bit of a binder, but really just some moisture. So the key to keeping these things intact is we're gonna keep them cold until we cook them. So now it's back into the fridge while we make our aioli. Now our aioli is going to start with an egg yolk. So again, we're separating, getting rid of that white. You can save those whites for a meringue or something else fun. And then that lemon that we've reserved, we're gonna squeeze about a teaspoon of that lemon juice in with the yolk. Seeds are not necessary. I'm gonna pop in just a pinch of smoked paprika for color and smokiness. And we'll give this a whisk. So what we're making here is an aioli, which means we're trying to create an emulsion. We've got the yolk in here with the juice, and what we're gonna try and do next is incorporate some fat. So for the fat, I've got a half cup of vegetable oil. Just no flavor added, just the fat. And we're gonna add it just a couple drops at a time to get this started. And the key here is to just keep whisking the whole time. So when you start out, you're adding just a small amount of fat, making sure that gets emulsified into the liquid. And then, as it starts to come together, you can add just a little bit more. A bit of a thin stream there. If you see it start to separate, you need to slow down, give it a good whisk and get it back to where everything is suspended, the fat suspended in the liquid. So it should start to thicken up and lighten up in color as well. Now you could do this in a food processor or in a blender, but for the amount we're doing today, it's easier to just do it by hand. Plus, you know, it's good for your muscles. All right, now we've got all of that oil incorporated. So we're gonna add our seasoning agents now, which would be some honey mustard and just a touch of smoked salt. So we've got all that oil incorporated. We need to incorporate some garlic, which I've minced down. And actually we can take this even finer into a paste here. I'll show you guys how to do that. So once you've got it minced down nice and fine, take the side of your knife and just smash it into the table, right? So you can come back through with your knife, but again, just put it flat on the table and smash it. And this is going to incorporate into our aioli so much easier as a paste. So garlic as a seasoning agent, we want to add a little bit of honey mustard as well. We've got the Big Rick's jalapeno honey mustard. We'll do about two tablespoons. And then just a shake of smoked salt. Give this a taste and see where we landed. Beautiful color on that. That's really nice. It's bright from the lemon juice, but it's creamy. That fat really distributes all the flavors across the tongue. Use just a little bit more salt, but we're pretty much there. 
All right, so we just turned the Yoder on and left it at 350 when I turned it on initially. I wanted it at 450 for the cook. And even though I'm standing 10 feet away from it, I can change it with my phone, so I'm going to. Set point 450. All right, we've got the 640S set up without the diffuser in place. We've put the Yoder Smoker's griddle over the firebox. It's nice and hot. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the uh, salmon burgers with a little bit more of that fin and feather right there on the surface. It's a good layer of oil down on the griddle. Kind of move this around a little bit. Keep our salmon burgers from sticking. And then we'll go season side down to start. Great sizzle. What a guy. And go ahead and get the top season now. We got that down. Oh man, instantly aromatic. It smells so good. And then as soon as you get those seasoned, you want to close the lid up is we're forming a really nice crust on the bottom side, but we need to cook it all the way through. Now what we can do is finish these indirect if necessary. We can go ahead and move them way off to the side so that they don't take on a bunch more color. We're looking for an internal temperature of 140 degrees Fahrenheit on the very center of those. All right, so it doesn't take long when you're running nice and hot. Let's go here to the center and check out the crust on there. Wow, that looks beautiful. Go ahead and give this a flip. Nice. Perfect. Little guy. Nice. All right, so we're looking to form that same nice sear, that crust on the other side before we move these in direct to finish if necessary. Now I've got my onion rolls, I'm going to add just a little bit of butter to the surface and then onto the griddle with those. So baby burger's temping right at 140, we're going to pull him off first. Let's go check on our buns. Well that looks perfect. Softened but crisped up on the surface, very nice. Bottom buns, looking good. So I'm feeling good about the crust on these now. We're gonna check our temp in the dead center. See where we're at. Just about 10 degrees shy where we wanna finish. So let's move these off to the side here. Close the lid up, and let the internal come all the way up. Just a few minutes it took to bring it up. Just shy of 140, we're gonna call that good. Already temp the back when it's ready to go. Let's go build these burgers. All right, so we're gonna hit the bottom bun with some of our mustard sauce. We'll top that off with a little bit of lettuce. Nice couple of slices of our heirloom tomatoes here. This one looks even better. There we go. Just a few thin sliced red onions. Then on top with our salmon burger. And we're gonna take some sliced avocado here. Just fan that out right on top. Beautiful. And just cause it's so good, a little bit more of that sauce. There you have it. Boom. All right, let's do it one more time. Mustard sauce on the base. A little bit of lettuce, thin sliced tomato, everything thin. I like everything thin. You don't get too much of anything all at once. It's all working together. That is until you get to the burger. There's nothing thin about that burger patty. But man, look at the juice coming out. There's a lot of juice in there. We're going to cut it open in just a second. You'll see. One more time with the avocado. I can't even show you the other burger because Justin got hungry behind the camera over there, took care of it for me. How was it, Justin? Spectacular. It was spectacular, he says. Getting saucy. Top it all off. Boom. 
All right, let's cut her open. Dang. Oh, we've got juice. We've got juice. Beautiful. Woo. Oh, man. That salmon is so juicy and tender. It's all over my face. I feel like it. No. Great freshness from the tomatoes, a little bit of crunch from the outside of there, as well as these red onions. Just fantastic, but that sauce is unbelievable. Love it. Never skip the sauce. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all of the products featured in today's video, everything from the seasonings to the tools and the grills. If you have any questions or comments, or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.